प्रणाम सर्वेभ्य प्रणाम महोदय द थीम गिवन फॉर मी द थीम गिवन फॉर मी इज इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम ओके इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ नेचर कल्चर एंड एग्रीकल्चर एंड इन माय ओपिनियन इज अ हेडी कॉन्कॉक्शन नेचर कल्चर एंड एग्रीकल्चर दे आर म्यूचुअली इंटरलिंक इंटरेक्ट पॉइंट एक्चुअली सो इट्स माय प्लेजर टू टॉप ऑन दिस सब्जेक्ट बिफोर दैट आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर माय इंसाइट्स इन एंड द थीम इज साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ नेचर कल्चर एंड एग्रीकल्चर सो आई वुड लाइक टू गिव माई इंसाइट्स इन कपल ऑफ सेंटेंसेस how i have put my or laid my hands on two sides one side science and technology and other side nature culture and agriculture as she introduced me i am basically an electronics engineer who has worked in aerospace domain okay and involved in some of the software development product developments for the state of art aircraft like airbus a380 and boeing 787 dreamliner i am rather blessed and honored to have worked in a global teams where the product development teams were located across the world okay and i was fortunate to work with the best of the designers in the world and worked on the cutting edge technologies that's where my science and technology experience comes from on the culture and agriculture actually i am from a agrarian background and my village is 100 kilometers from this place so i was born in a village raised in a village but educated in engineering college so i have seen or rather i have the agriculture first hand experience okay i have done tilling of the land as a farmer i have done plowing i have sown seeds i have done harvesting i have done post harvesting processing also all with this own hands in a village during my engineering days so i have the experience of nature and agriculture so that gives me a lot of opportunity to understand how our ancient knowledge system was there when we say ancient knowledge system it is nothing but the vedic knowledge system only by and large okay not everything by and large so today i want to dwell upon my those experiences uh, before that before that uh, both the speakers spoke one spoke about uh, uh, in india the environment is different a sovereign state in europe has a different connotation and india though the statement is same the connotation is different we bring in that extra dimension of nyaya anyaya and it is fact any law when it is stated in europe it means something but when it is tried to be implemented in india it takes a different turn why is it so because of that concept of nyaya and anyaya okay now where did this come in nyaya and anyaya for that we have a basis which i would like to show this law you can make it full screen so uh, before dwelling into that our knowledge system has a very clean purpose its standard it has been through the ages the purpose of our knowledge is very focused and humanity oriented mankind oriented prosperity oriented growth oriented how is it just three examples first one is acharya also spoke purushartha chatushtaya there are four purushasthas okay our knowledge system acts as a trigger to four purusharthas dharma artha kama moksha okay for to understand this we have to understand one concept that is iha and para okay the whole western school of philosophy 
dwells on Iha. Iha is here, now, in this life, in this body. And once this body life ceases, there is nothing. So for them, the whole knowledge is focused or oriented towards Iha. Whereas our Bharatiya knowledge system focus more on Para. For Para, you have to accept one thing. Whether you are Astika or Nastika, there is life after death. While the Western school of philosophy says that the life comes to end with the death, our philosophy starts, there is life after death. So you live for that. It's as simple as, you know, why do we work today? We work for a better tomorrow. If you extend the same logic, why is this life? This is for a better next life. So for a better next life, there has to be a sadhana. And that sadhana is the tapas form. And it comes in different colors, hues, and for that different darshanas are there. Those shat darshanas, what doctor uh, was uh, explaining in the morning. So whatever it suits, you follow that. But the fundamental acceptance is there is para along with this iha. So our knowledge system addresses the both. The while Western addresses only iha, our knowledge system addresses para also. How is that? First thing is it uh, uh, triggers the prasharta. Okay, so it puts a ethical platform. Okay, and what both of them were talking about, there is an ethical platform. Within the ethical platform, the growth and prosperity has to be there. And this growth and prosperity is at all levels. At I as the individual level, at the soul level, we as the society, and we as the country, Rashtra Parikalpane. The growth has to be there in all the three tiers and it has to be ethical. That is the uniqueness of our knowledge system. Whereas the Western system, the growth has to be there with the basic understanding everything is fair in love and war. Okay? So the end result matters, not how you get the results. Whereas for us it's very clear. It has to be on an ethical platform. It has to be on a fair basis. You cannot resort to unfair basis. That's the focus our Bharati education system brings. When it comes to second level, that is Iha, we all, we are there and everyone has desires. This cannot be refuted. We all have desires. And why we have desires? Because if our desires are fulfilled, we'll be happy. The end result is Antato Gatva, we have to be happy. Now, how will we be happy? If our desires are fulfilled. So, we have the means of ishta prap. Also, we will be happy if there is no causes for unhappiness. So, anishta nivrutti has to be there. So, our knowledge system has a prescription for how to get what we want and at the same time stay ethically. That's much more important. And the next thing about our knowledge system is it's inclusive. We never say that the famous Upanishad quote, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Dukkha Bhag. See the inclusivity of this. It doesn't say only Hindus should be happy. It doesn't say only Hindus should be free from diseases. It says Sarve, everyone, every country. It's totally applicable to the whole planet. That kind of nobility our knowledge system promotes. That's the gentleness of our knowledge system. It's totally global, inclusive and intended for everyone. Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. That's what it stems from. And another aspect of this uh, quote is Sarve Bhadradi Pashyant. Here the general interpretation of Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu is everyone should see good or experience good. 
ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯದನ್ನು ಮಂಗಲವಯವಾದದ್ದನ್ನು ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಅರ್ಥಾತ್ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಪವಿತ್ರವಾದದ್ದನ್ನು ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಅಂಬೋದು ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಪವಿತ್ರವಾದದ್ದು ಅಂದರೆ ಏನು ಅಂದರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಗ್ರಂಥದಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಬಿಚ್ಚಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಳ್ತದೆ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನಹಿ ಜ್ಞಾನೇನ ಸದೃಶಂ ಪವಿತ್ರ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಂಗಲಂ ಅಂದರೆ ಒಂದು ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯದನ್ನು ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಾಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಾಗುವಂತೆ ಪ್ರಚೋದಿಸುತ್ತೆ ದೇರ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಟಿ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಬ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಓನ್ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಫೋಕಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾವು ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಾಗಬೇಕು ಜ್ಞಾನದ ಕಡೆಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ವೇದನೂ ಹೇಳುತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಪ್ರವಚನಾಭ್ಯಂ ನ ಪ್ರಮದಿತವ್ಯ ಅಂದರೆ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಗೂ ಎಂದಿಗೂ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯವನ್ನು ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂದರೆ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಯಾರು ಅಧ್ಯಯನದಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಾನೆ ಅವನು ಮಂಗಲವಾದದ್ದನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ನೀವು ಅಥವಾ ನಾವು ಸಂತೋಷವಾಗಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಈ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಸ್ಲಿಕ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸಿಂದ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಜ್ಞಾನದ ಕಡೆಗೆ ಗಮನ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ನಾವು ಸಂತೋಷದಿಂದ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಭಾರತೀಯ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ನ ಕೊಡಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರವಾಹದಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಳಗಬೇಕು ಎಂಬುದು ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಔಟ್ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಓಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಓಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಲೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಟ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಐ ವಿ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಟ್ ದ ಆರ್ಕಿಟೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಥೀಮ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಎನೇಬಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಷನ್ ದ ವಿಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ದುಃಖ ನಿರ್ವೃತ್ತಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತು ಓಕೆ ದ ರೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನೇಬ್ಲರ್ ದಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ನಾವು ಜನರಲಿ ವಿ ಸೇ ಅವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆರ್ ವೇರಿಕ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟಾಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟಾಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫೀಸ್ ಅನಾದಿ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ದೇರ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೌ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿಲಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಹೈರ್ ಆರ್ ಕೀ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆಂಟ್ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯೂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪೆರಿಶ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ನನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಹೈರ್ ಕಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಫೆಮಿಲಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಶೋ ಹೌ ದೀಸ್ ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಲಿಂಕೇಜ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ಲೇಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇದಾಸ್ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಸೇ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇದಾ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ನ್ಯಾರೋ ಡೌನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚ
if you want any program to be successful, you have to do the Mangala Charanam. What is Mangala Charanam? It is lighting the lamp and praying in Nirvignam Purume Deva Sarvatareshu Sarvada. Very simple. Okay? That is the basis for lighting the lamp. Now, for a period of time, it has been followed and it has become the culture. So, where it traces back? It traces back to Vedas. Now, coming to my context of agriculture, the agriculture, there is a beautiful saying, Rushti Mula Rushi. The, whenever you utter the word agriculture, it is standing on the platform of rainfall. Rainfall is the crux of agriculture. And any farmer, I think nobody will disagree, urbanites, those who are not into the practice may not understand. Otherwise, the whole agro activities will get kick started with the rainfall. If that year rainfall is good, you will have a bumper crop. If there is no rainfall, obviously there is no, it's a bad harvest time. So the whole agrarian activity is based on rainfall. So the Veda dictates for the king, look, in your kingdom, if there has to be prosperity, okay, then you have to take care of rain. For rains, it has a prescription, Rishtikamo Kariya Yajeta. Okay? Those who wish that the, there should be a good rainfall, you have to perform Kariri Yaga. That is the Vedic prescription. So earlier, during the king's rule, every king before the monsoon picked up, they used to invariably conduct Kariri Yaga. And the trigger for that statement is from Vedas. So Vedas gives such prescriptions. Now next comes the question, what is Kariri Yaga? How it has to be conducted? Who has to conduct? What is the procedure? So on so forth, 100 questions comes. Now our knowledge system addresses that through next tier. The next tier is Vedangas. You know, six Vedangas are there. Jyotisha, Vyakarana, Chanda, Nirukta, Shiksha, Kalpa. These are the uh, Vedangas which are independent disciplines, okay, which are in alliance with the Vedic sayings. So the role of Jyotisha is it answers when the Veda, when the Kariri Yaga has to be done. If we take the latest incidents of uh, 22nd January, the Balakarama had to be consecrated. It is the Jyotisha which gave the direction, do it on Pusha, Shuddha, Dvadashi in Abhijitta Murta. How did they cook it? Did he just throw up those numbers, those uh, astrologers? No, there are prescriptions. Those descriptions are there in Jyotisha, which is the Vedanga. Okay? Then there is Chandasu Vyakarana. Then the next thing is Kalpa. So now we know when Kariri Yaga has to be done. And the question is, how do we do it? What are the procedure steps involved? That comes in picture. That is taken by, by Kalpa Sutras. Okay? Kalpa Sutras are of two types. Shrauta Sutras, Shulva Sutras. These Shrauta Sutras are nothing but a process engineering. Those who are from science and technology background, we have the manufacturing process, engineering process, several processes. Okay? So the Shrauta Sutra addresses the process system, how to start the Homa, Kariri Yaga, well, we have decided to do the Kariri Yaga, how to start the Kariri Yaga, which shloka has to be chanted, what, uh, how the, which deity has to be invoked, there are different deities to be invoked like Indra, Varuna, Vayu, so on and so forth. For different Yagas, different deities has to be invoked. So it gives the thumb rules and guidelines. That is taken care by Shruba Shruta, sorry, Shauta Shruta. Apart from that, then there is a engineering part of it. That engineering part is like you have to make a Vedic Kalta, 
Okay. Then you have to uh, cook the food for ahuti, purna ahuti. All those descriptions are there in the Shulbha Sutras. And this Shulbha Sutra is rich treasure of arithmetic and geometry. Today, whatever arithmetic and geometry the Western world sees it or who claims it, including the famous Pythagoras theorem, all are nothing but the pockets of the Shulbha Sutras. And the whole science of maths and astronomy are nothing but the our Jyotisha. We know that Jyotisha is nothing but a combination of mathematics and astronomy. And we call maths as the mother of all sciences. And that mother of all science is hidden in our Jyotisha. Somehow Jyotisha is linked with the astronomy, astrology. And with the astrology say, ah, oh, come on, you say that, you predict that, that never, never happens. So astrology is fake. Here, I mean, it's kind of conspiracy. You understand one thing and refute another thing. Whereas astronomy is different, astrology is different, mathematics is different. Since the mathematics and astronomy are combined and clubbed together in, uh, in Jyotisha, Jyotisha is also getting condemned. But this is the tendency of the Western science and scientists. Okay? So that's how the role of Vedanga is. Now the king has decided to do Kariri Yaga. The Amrutha Mahurta has been fixed. Okay? The Kalpa Sutras describe us what to do, when to do, how to do. Then comes the next tier of knowledge. That is Shastras. There are several, several Shastras like Krishi Shastra, okay? then Ayurveda, Dhanurveda, uh, may all the Shilpakala Shastra, Natya Shastra, Sangeeta Shastra, there are in total 64 Shastras. Who comes the next tier of knowledge which tells the implementation details. Okay? Here taking in our own context of uh, agriculture, okay? there is a Shastra called Krishi Parashara. This Krishi Parashara, India is an agrarian country right from Mahabharata days, which means easily we can go back 5,000 years. 5,000 years also this Krishi Parashara was there, but however because of the documental evidence, we say somewhere 1,000 years back Krishi Parashara could have been written. Now this Krishi Parashara is an interesting document where there are rainfall prediction models and at different point of time what agricultural activities have to be performed like when plowing has to be done, when sowing has to be done, when harvesting has to be done and when what should we do post harvesting. Those intricate details are there. Today to what extent it is applicable, how we have to customize is different thing, but 5,000 years back, a documented system was there. That's what we have to take pride in. Means, in the Western world, India has been looked upon as, I mean, illiterate people, poor people, snake charmers, rat catchers. This is the kind of propaganda Western world has done unfairly to our country. If a country was illiterate, if a country was very poor, okay, how can it write a document like Krishi Parasha, which gives all the details of agricultural implements, like how a plow has to be made. And plows are of different type. For tilling, one type of plow is used. Sowing, another type of plow is used. Then for weeding out, some other type of plow is used. This way, as an engineering student, I was attracted to agriculture. See, in a village, a carpenter, he doesn't have all the modern gadgets, but still he does so precise equipment, okay, the results we see. Can you click on picture? And people in this area, these are all familiar figures. And there's a lot of engineering model in this, okay. See, the plow, which is used before sowing, okay, it has to be used for 
preparing the ground for sowing. That is one type of flow. For sowing is the second picture on the left hand side. It is for sowing. Those who have actually done the agriculture and use this device, I would say gadget, then you appreciate the engineering sense in the ancient India in a small village. Every village from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, Afghanistan to Burma were agrarian Indian villages. They had different type of same agricultural implements. And the sewing tool is such a fantastic thing. It is a uh, multitasking element. Simultaneously, you drop the seeds in four columns. Okay? It's a marvelous tool. And this has been there. It, no CAD was used, no CAM was used. And a simple, the so-called illiterate carpenter in a village was doing it with no either scale or geometry box or anything. And they are working even today. Okay? And the next thing is the weeding out tool. This is much more accurate instrument. I mean, see, the bull is used. You know the ox and their intelligence. Okay, and now that is used to till between the two crop lines. If the bull goes little this side, that side, one row of the crop is lost. If the person who is tilling, if he shakes the hand, another row is lost. But believe me, nobody will lose any row in the whole several hectares of land they till. That's the kind of operational efficiency and operational knowledge knowledge our simple farmer and village spokesman had. That is the strength of our knowledge system. Okay? Not what we see. I mean, it is there what we see in... Okay. So that's the kind of knowledge and that stems out from the second tier of the, third tier of the knowledge system, Veda, Vedanga and the uh, individual specific Shastras. Then the next tier of knowledge is Itihasa and Puranas. Puranas were uh, kind of a, uh, they know Purana Vidhi No, Purana is very lively documents, go back, and they provide the examples, like Acharya quoted when Bhishma was lying on the uh, Sharapanchara, Draupati and Vas, and he gave the model. So Purana acts as a guidance and it gives inspiration. For example, simple is, Oh, I have so much of poverty, what do I do? Someone says, Hey, our puja madhidu, niyu madhi agatte. Okay? So, that kind of counseling Purana gives. This is the fourth tier of knowledge. Like this way, our whole Indian knowledge system has been very structured, layered, and there is a collaboration between each layers. Okay? Next to So, our knowledge system is prescriptive, descriptive and narrative. And the next thing is, okay, the role of science and technology in the Bharatiya knowledge system. First, it was an enabler. Next thing is, it is a growth and prosperity engine. The science and technology, what we had in ancient India, was the reason for our prosperity. Though in the last 500 years or one millennium, India has been painted as a impoverished state, but before that, it was one of the richest country. Okay? If it was not a richest country, or if the way how Western people have painted as poor country, why would Ghazni attack, invade India 18 times? If it was a poor country, will he invade 18 times? What was the motivation for him to invade? Nothing but the wealth of this country. He, he was so uh, enamored with the Indian wealth. I uh, have to take it from this country at any cost, no matter how many times I invade. Repeatedly, repeatedly, he was uh, repulsed and beaten. But still, he did not give up. He attacked because India was a prosperous country. And for India being a prosperous country, the reason is we had a very strong science and technology. Next thing is, our science and technology and knowledge is very well documented system. Okay, as given in the four layers and it has been sustained through 
oral traditions. Okay, earlier written tradition was not there, and as he said, the Gurukula education system ensured that there is no variance in swara or vanjana. That kind of perfection our training institutes were providing. That's the kind of education infrastructure this country had. But unfortunately, they were lost. And overnight, when Macaulay said, English education system is the education of this, of this country, overall, all our scholars became illiterate. And this science and technological knowledge has been successfully passed from one generation to other generation to other generation. And that's how it has been live and kicking. The other day, Balakarama uh, idol who started it, Arun Yogi Raj, he said for five generations, our five generation forefathers were sculptors. And that's how the knowledge has passed down. That's how the Indian knowledge system has passed down. Okay? And there was an excellent hands-on honing skills. Everyone would have his shishya and make sure that whatever knowledge he gets, it doesn't remain in the bookish language. It has to be implemented and it has to be put in use. A simple farmer will start training his son right from 5 to 8 years how to hold the bull ox to, how to hold the plow, such a way that he becomes a perfect farmer. There is no, there was no finishing schools. Today we have five years of, or four years of engineering. Then we have followed by finishing schools. That concept was not there. It was so well mentored. Okay, every family, the knowledge used to flow on. That's the kind of system we had. So our knowledge system was collaborative, okay, complementary, and customizable to time and the region. Now, what is that our science and technology has delivered? I've been talking. We'll see the results. Quickly, two minutes more. Yes, Next. The performance of our science and technology, which was part and parcel of the Indian knowledge system, we have the proof. It has a massive, like the kind of temples, the Brudeshwara temple, Konar temples, they are so massive, there was no JCB, there were no cranes. In spite of that, they had the technology or the techniques where they could build such a huge temples and huge gopurams on the temple top. And even today it's a mystery and I don't think so any technology can emulate those kind of temples. And we have the Kumbhalgudu fort which is the kind of a junior wall of China. Imagine how it was constructed, the kind of arithmetics, the mensuration, okay, calculations. It involved all the civil engineering aspects. Okay? And without any cement, mortar or steel. They stand even today after thousands of years. That's the kind of engineering knowledge we had in this country. And when it comes to amazing, I mean that uh, Ellora Rock Cut Temple, perhaps it is the only temple in the world which is converted inverted way. Now imagine the kind of uh, engineering design they had in their mind and everything was here. Nothing, no laptop, no design, no drawing, no drawing board, nothing. Everything they were able to do there. Isn't it amazing? Thousands of years back. And when it comes to fineness, one is the brutality in nature, the hugeness in nature, the other one is fineness. You go to Beluru and Alabedu temples, the kind of de degree of precision, elegance, you will find nowhere in the world you will find that. How was it possible if there was no science and technological knowledge in this country? It always, as an engineer, I always wonder about it. And the ornaments, we have seen the Balakrama idol without the jewellery. The kind of ornaments he is wearing, that is sculpted on a stone. Now imagine what can be done with the real gold. It's amazing the knowledge, the design system, 
the creativity of our people the creativity of the people really deserves a place which unfortunately is not found in this world next thing is processing we had a very good processing engineering and processing elements otherwise how would we have prepared the copper bronze okay brass gold silver all this have been available in this country for thousands of years which means phalanomia if the product is there the process should be there if the process is there the knowledge should be there it goes in this reverse logic we have the temples which are several thousand years old that means there would be a engineering process that means people had knowledge of it this established the superiority of indian science and technology then we comes to utilities utilities has been there ubiquitous in this country if you go to cooking you enter the kitchen all those utilities have been there for thousands of years so that knowledge has been there with us you go to ayurveda the doctor was saying what today the latest technology uh, instruments we have its counterpart was there in ancient india in the ayurvedic medics, medical systems they were there it is we who are not trusting yeah ayurveda pa one the jora ho one vara de let me take a doro 650 next 3 hours i am ready okay fast 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 results so because of that we have suffered you take uh, textiles and garments indian silk was the finest silk okay and we were able to produce it that means we had the knowledge we had science we had technology and war and war welfare both was there we had a very strong defense system india never attacked any country that everyone accepts but when someone attack we successfully defended ourselves goris and ghaznis they kept on attacking us for thousands of years at least 700 years successfully we defended but eventually we collapsed is a different story then british came yes the gates were opened but warfare was an art in this country similarly welfare also tanks wells and all there are hundreds and hundreds of year old tanks even today why did the tanks appear because the king was welfare minded he designed such a way that we had a cultivatable agricultural land because of that relevant mindset those things were designed so we had everything in this country we have proven track record of ancient science and technology in this country okay so dhanyawada for coming in here and listen now what next uh, i have been telling it was there it was there it was there tatakim to kya hua to kya hua we have to put our knowledge system into use on par with the current trends see there is a gap of 1000 years 1000 years back we were good now we are damn good with the it industry and blah 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 everything we are damn good but this 1000 years of gap is there that has to be filled up so we have to revive our indian knowledge system bring it on par with the blend with the modern education system that is the challenge and the challenge is either we have vidya peters where like our acharyas come or we have engineering schools here technical schools other schools person like me come but the solution lies is we both should merge mix and match okay that's where the attempt is and i am working on that project we have the arunvati gurukulam where we are trying to build the modern knowledge on our traditional knowledge we call it as blended education so we are teaching tomorrow there is a session where our students will perform having studied the traditional mathematics how they are to how the traditional mathematics system is better than the modern mathematics system they'll be showing the demonstration i welcome everyone to please come and see seventh eighth students will be doing it that brings you the trust of our jyotisha and kalpa sutras 
सो विथ दैट इनविटेशन थैंक यू एवरीवन धन्यवाद आप